All right, good evening. Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Cumberland School Committee on Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at 7.01 p.m. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. For the record, Mrs. Rogalski and Mr. Fiorello are absent tonight. Next item on the agenda is approval of agenda. I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion by Mrs. Feather. Second. Second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Next on the agenda, the consent agenda. Item A, approval of minutes from regular meeting 328-2024, special meeting 326-2024, Item B, approval of minutes from the executive session 328-2024. Item C, the enrollment report for 3-2024. Item D, residency and truancy report for 8-2024. Item E, school transportation report for 1-2024. I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion by Mrs. Feather. Second. Second by Mrs. Vogel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Next item is the personnel announcements. Dr. Thornton. Here tonight, I'm filling in from Ms. Drezek. Uh, first, we have one appointment. We have uh, effective date 4-8-2024, Nicholas Figueredo, custodian district-wide. We have an unpaid leave of absence, 4-24-2024 through the 24-25 school year. Judith Redahan, grade six social studies at NCMS. We have a second unpaid leave, 4-19-2024 through 24-25 school year. Melissa Kuzinitz, Curriculum Coordinator, 912 Admin. We have one resignation, 45 2024. Christina Oranis, IT District Support. And lastly, one resignation currently, personal LOA. We have the first one, 630 2024. Abigail Brunel, Math Grade 7 at McCourt. And 630 2024. Danielle Lipacher, Math Essentials at McCourt. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Thornton. Next on the agenda is the report out of executive session meeting on 4-11-2024. Report out of executive session votes. We did not take any votes this evening. And the next item is the vote to seal the minutes of the executive session. I need a motion to seal the minutes. Motion by Mrs. Feather. Second by Mrs. Vogel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Next item is the superintendent's report. Dr. Thornton. Adam Chair, good evening. First, uh, Mike, take it away. Tomorrow, if the committee does have any time, we have a unified basketball home day game uh, at 9.30 a.m. at the high school. So if you are able to come, that happy to see you. But it, it's a great event. It's on our opening uh, Kyle Cares kickoffs. I wanted to just tell you about that. Next up, we have a, a great, uh, announcement uh, this week if you haven't heard please come up we had um, some great news we had a uh, miss Coughlin here has been recognized as the Rhode Island secondary principal of the year and I, I, I just want to say um, as superintendent I often make a lot of decisions some better than others one of my best decisions was uh, putting miss Coughlin in place at, at CMS she cares about the building. She knows what it takes to get the job done. She's laser focused on the work. She's relentless. She has a sense of humor. She is the full package for an administrator, and I couldn't be more thrilled to have her in Cumberland. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Do right. this way. Shaking that hand. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank if you. If we could get a picture, a picture first, picture. and then we nice. get a, a couple words from Ms. Paul. If I could add, we're not done now. Beth can tell us about her next steps from Rhode Island. Right? Yeah, yeah, thank you. 
Good evening. Yes. Thank you. Um, I have to say that oh, we had a great day yesterday. My my family was uh, I was surprised by my family coming to uh, coming to the ceremony. I want to acknowledge Tanya Rayo over in the audience there, and Julie Butler, also Jamie Miller, Laurie Lang, um, uh, many others who put together uh, started the process. Um, they, uh, what they told me was an email came through from the Rhode Island um, Association of Secondary Principals and um, it said the Rhode Island principal, Secondary Principal of the Year, they're looking for someone who's data focused, who's data in their, um, in, as part of their leadership practice and, uh, and uh, one of the teachers said, oh, that's Beth, we got to put that in for Beth. So uh, I was very proud at, um, to, to have, to start the process because as we went through the application and um, I was told I was nominated which was fabulous went through the application we're able to go back you know over the 10 years that um, that I've been in the position and the you know the the work that's been done at North Common Middle School and, and I can it's just I'm so proud and it really is not an accomplishment for me it's an accomplishment for the entire staff um, you know I, I was saying yesterday that it's my it, it's 10 years that I've been, I've been at this job, two years at McCourt, and you know, we're, we're at a point now where uh, it couldn't have come at a better time because you know, we, we were doing great, we were at great momentum, COVID hit, kind of took a little dip, and then we brought it right back up. And I feel like it you know, really gave the staff the um, acknowledgement it deserved. The staff, the students, the parents, the community, the leadership, that has always been so supportive of me and the committee who's always, you know, showed a, a real keen interest in the work that we do. And all of that put together um, really uh, shows what, uh, what a, a great, cohesive, supportive, focused, and driven um, organization can do. So I'm so proud. Um, again, my family joined. My daughter came all the way from New Jersey, she drove 4 a.m. to come, come to their, um, come to the, uh, uh, to the ceremony, um, but thank you. Thank you again, the work continues. We are, we are, we have many goals to get to achieve. So thank you very much. Ah, so what's next? What next is um, I now uh, am the Rhode Island representative for the national um, principal of the year through the um, national organization. So I am going to be working hard. Um, this coming week and, and submitting that application and um, making sure that, you know, they, that Rhode Island is well represented, which is my goal. Thank you. Thank you. And on to our construction update. First, at McCourt, I think I told you a while back, we were just doing a makeover of the library space at McCourt, and these are some great pictures of the uh, new furniture. We're not quite done in, the, in, the, in that space, looking for shades, more furniture. We have some neat things that came in. We have a nook here in the corner you can get into, some different kind of um, aspects in that library. So it's a nice facelift at McCourt, kind of in process. Um, next up, Ashton, things are really starting to happen. On the left, that was today, sidewalks are, are going in. In the middle, the island is being renovated, I'm saying. It's not going to be a circle, not an odd shape. It's going to have parking in the front, a new flagpole with a solar light. It's a much cleaner look at the front of Ashton as you walk in. Inside to your left, you can see those are going to be windows. Those are going in. In the middle, still some low-bearing steel has to come in. They make all the steel somewhere across the country and transport it, and this is all uh, prepping for that. On the right, the bathrooms are uh, almost complete. You can see the tiles in, the flooring is in. Now it's just putting in the appliances and uh, you know the frames and all, all that type of stuff. Um, I wanted to show you this. Uh, a lot of plaques at Ashton. So uh, if you look at them, the first one, if you're going to look, 1959, and Superintendent Bernard F. Norton. So there he is, right? Um, no one on the uh, council, uh, council, council president is here. Oh. Mr. Coughlin. No, Louis J. Kologi. Kologi? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh. The second plaque. The second plaque. 1966. Now it's B.F. Norton and it's uh, Mr. Condon. And um, on the council, no one there. But the next two are interesting. You can see over here, 
1998, you can see on the council, you have Dan McKee, you have uh, a person named Mutter. Mr. Mutter is on the council. So it's kind of, kind of cool to see that. You can see some uh, names from the past here on the school committee as well. Um, and then we have 2008, you can see the last one. And uh, so it's, it's neat to see the, kind of the history of all the plaques. We'll be adding one more uh, this probably late summer. So any questions on Ashton? All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thornton, and congratulations again, Mrs. Coughlin, and to your whole staff. Next item on the agenda is reports of standing committees. Item A, Fiscal Management Subcommittee update. Mr. Collins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have payment of the bills this evening. Our Fiscal Management Subcommittee met this evening. Uh, we have 13 resolutions for the full committee. We have payment of the bills. and. Uh, just uh, there's really no major updates other than uh, the actually the little small thing. NCMS elevator has increased weight capacity, so we had to, so it, the, the lift. I, I beg your pardon, the lift that we were we had uh, had repaired, but uh, the tech who came in actually expanded because I, I guess there's a, a student who has like a really heavy wheelchair, so it sounds kind of small, but. Um, I don't know who this gentleman is. Mr. De, uh, De Jesus is not here, but uh, the tech, we went to repair the lift and uh, he increased the capacity. So if you're into weight capacities on lifts, uh, tonight's your night. Uh, but we will have those resolutions in the bills later in the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Next is Policy and Procedures Subcommittee update. Mrs. Feather. Yes, I cannot wait actually to hear about the lifts. Um, so we did meet this week, um, policy and procedures, and we do have some um, uh, a policy that we'll be bringing forth a little bit later on today about um, the uh, grading from grades uh, grades K through five, um, and we also did have discussions about a couple of other policies, but we didn't take any action on those because we need to um, further amend. Thank you, Mrs. Feather. Uh, the Achievement and Communication Subcommittee update did not meet this week. And next is uh, District Health and Wellness Subcommittee update. Mrs. Rogalski is not here, but I don't believe that they met this week either. They meet once a month. Okay, next, uh, public hearing reading of amended policy, I-12, K-8, proficiency-based grading. Mrs. Feather. Yes. Um, we'll be voting on this a little bit later. This is the reading into, um, reading into uh, the public public comment, the public hearing. Um, so we'll just be ask for this to be read into the hearing. Um, do you want me to actually talk about it when we are voting on it or talk about it now? Okay. I thought when we were voting on it. But. Okay, we can wait till we vote on it. Yeah, okay. sure. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is public comment related to this particular policy. If anyone from the public wants to speak on this policy. Okay, next we have our general comments from the public. If there's anyone from the public, mm -hmm. President Kinch, come on down. Thank you. Yeah, we've missed you. <laughs> um, uh, good evening and uh, thank you. I just want a couple of reminders uh, again on behalf of the town council. I also wanted to congratulate Ms. Coughlin. I saw her on the way out, but again, another uh, a great, uh, a great thing that, that Cumberland schools have, have done. Um, a second, I just want to remind everybody we're having that community outreach Monday for the Heritage Park. I know I was down at BF Norton for reading, uh, reading week today, and uh, I talked to the principal there because I know they have used that once in a while as a kind of a little mini field trip, but we're gonna have, uh, there's gonna be a dinner with it, and they're gonna have some speakers on it and, and talk about the history of Heritage Park as we go forward trying to get that up and, and running to the standard it should be. And Tuesday, just a reminder that the Charter Commission is going to be uh, meeting with uh, the Council to kind of discuss some of the things that were brought up in, in the fine work that they did. So in case anybody wants to come down, I just want to do those two reminders. Thank you. Thank you, President Kitch. Any other comments from the public? All right, next we will move on to old business. Uh, discussion and or a vote on proposed bus tr transportation contract with Durham. Dr. Thornton, want to kick this off? Or Madam Chair, so this uh, contract uh, has been put in, in your drives. I, I know we, we've had some discussions. Um, um, 
Mr. Schmuck is here tonight should the committee have any questions along with the Tim McGrath, but uh, we would ask for your uh, vote tonight on the contract. Yes, uh, Mr. Collins. I do have a question. I've read um, what you put in the drive. I do have a question, though, perhaps for people who don't, didn't get a chance to read it before we vote. Um, Dr. Thorne or maybe Mr. Adams or even Mr. McGrath, can you explain some of the changes or the updates or the augmentations in the new contract as opposed to our previous contract with uh, Durham? I'll do that if that's okay. I mean, in general terms, the contract is similar to the contract, uh, the prior contract. We, uh, in terms of getting this in front of you, uh, and just so it's clear, there was a public bidding process. There were a couple of bidders. Durham, from the uh, fiscal perspective, was, the, um, was the, the bid that the administration thought that they would bring to you. It was the lower of the two bids. Um, and so the only major changes, if you will, between this and what had been in the contract was we just wanted to make sure, and we kind of went back and forth with Durham in a collaborative sort of back and forth, that all of the aspects of the bid that were in the bid, you will bid it this way, were actually put into the contract. So, for example, there's a clause that says buses will be kept in work, good working condition. Um, a clause that says the buses, regular education buses will be at least 71 passengers and special education buses must be at least 20 passengers. These things come right out of the bid. This was part of the bid, so we wanted to make sure we captured it in the contract. And there are other items along those lines. One thing that was important to the administrative team was to continue to include what we referred to in the prior contract as a liquidated damages provision, which just related to um, those uh, rare events when uh, buses were not on time and so there's a provision where that requires um, sort of a small damages provision for Durham uh, if they are not on time and there's a whole back and forth in that. But that's really the same as what was already in the contract. Those are the major things that were added, but it was really just to conform with what the bid required of them. All right, thank you. And uh, Ms. Smith. This is actually a legal question for you, Mr. Adams, um, because we do have the contract here and, and to approve. However, we do not have to approve or a recommendation doesn't have to come from the superintendent it, because it just went through the bidding process or I'm not quite sure because we don't, we, we hadn't been recommended that Durham and to have any discussions or vote on Durham being the chosen vendor. So this so is it it doesn't is it so this is on for discussion and vote by you guys you guys will vote on the contract okay. so, it, so it's all encompassing so I mean typically there would be a recommendation by uh, uh, the purchasing manager I don't know if Tim has made that have you made that recommendation yeah so so would, there's been a recommendation made it's on for discussion and vote Yeah, you can vote on it. It's, it's properly before you. Uh, any uh, any other discussion, questions, comments? Okay, so pleasure of the committee. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, the contract. Mr. Collins makes a motion to approve the proposed bus transportation contract with Durham. Do we have a second? Second by Mrs. Vogel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome continuing with us. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next item. Now we move into new business. Item A, discussion and a vote on contract among the Town of Cumberland, the Cumberland School Committee, in their mobility concerning the installation of school bus stop armed traffic cameras on school buses. Mr. Adams. So I neglected with respect to Durham to mention this. Part of the bid with Durham was that the, well, part of the bid to the vendors 
now we have Durham, but all the vendors who would have bid on the contract for bus transportation were required to agree that should the school department make the agreement that we're now talking about with this Vera Mobility, they would agree to participate at, at no charge and do their part to make the Vera Mobility contract live without it costing the school department anything from the bus transportation contract perspective, and that is in the Durham contract. Moving to the Vera contract, this is a, an entity that I think the, the town was interested in engaging for purposes of um, helping drivers understand that they should not drive past a, stop, a stopped bus. And so what Vera provides is a camera. I'm not exactly sure how the stuff works, but essentially it'll take the picture of a car as it goes past a stopped bus, which it should not be doing and is a violation. And so Vera provides that technology. This contract is among Vera Mobility, the town of Cumberland, and the school department, which is because they are on our buses. So the relationship from a financial perspective is between Vera, which is providing these cameras, and really the town, which is then ticketing drivers who are violating the law. The relationship in terms of what happens with the ticketing money is really between the town and Vera. And that is the substance of the financial part of this contract, which doesn't impact you guys at all. You're not getting any money, and you're also not going to have to give up any money because any problems that might arise from the perspective, from Vera's perspective, if Vera were to say, hey, there's a problem here, that is something, a fee or whatever, would be something that would be borne by the town, not by you. A lot of l l legal stuff talking, but generally, the gist of this contract is it's a good thing. It's designed to stop people or at least ticket them if they are passing by a stopped bus with the arm out. So that's the goal of it. It's a very good thing to have. Um, and from your perspective, it, it doesn't have any financial impact to you, um, both because the bus transportation companies agreed to make it happen for us and uh, any fees that could possibly uh, uh, come about would be borne by the town. So that's the gist. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Dr. Thornton? Madam Chair, I would just add, um, it may surprise the committee, but it has happened more than once in the last several years, so this is really something we really want to have. Okay, pleasure of the committee. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Collins makes a motion to approve. A second. Second by Mrs. Feather and Ms. Smith. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Thank you. Uh, next item, discussion and a vote to approve homeschool instruction requests for the 2023-2024 school year. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Mrs. Feather. Second. Second by Mr. Collins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes five to zero. Uh, item C, discussion and or vote to authorize the administration to execute a release of school department's damages claims in exchange for payment by vendor's insurer for damage caused to a bench. Dr. Thornton. Madam Chair, long story short, a vendor at community school backed up and hit one of our new benches. Uh, they're, they're actually quite expensive, so this actually allows us to collect the money for the damaged bench from the vendor. Pleasure of the committee. Make a motion. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Collins makes a motion to approve to authorize the administration. Second, Second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes five to zero. Uh, next item, discussion or a vote to amend the annual meeting notice for the meeting scheduled for May 9th, the school committee open meeting scheduled for May 9th to be rescheduled to May 8th. Motion to approve by Mrs. Vogel. Second. Second by Mr. Collins. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Next item, discussion and or vote to approve amended policy I-12 K-8 proficiency-based grading. Mrs. Feather. All righty. So um, the K-8 uh, proficiency-based grading policy that um, 
uh, uh, in, uh, bleh, 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 I can't speak tonight. Um, part of it is to fully align a grading district district wide. There we go. Um, so some of the changes that are part of this are wording or phrasing changes. Um, one of the terms that I particularly liked was, and the team particularly liked actually, um, during the policy meeting was level um, level one or you know the the grade for uh, a one as opposed to like a grade one through four for standard based grading. Um, we changed that to emergent understanding. It's a little bit of a nicer um, term <laughs> description for um, for where those students are. Um, I think it was like part like not proficient or something uh, before. And another addition is allowing multiple um, multiple measures and outcomes. So specifically, teachers being committed to allowing students multiple opportunities to show what they know and can do. Um, so definitely an improvement to uh, to pull all of this together and get us into the same grading system. And I would um, it mo uh, it uh, passed the committee to to nothing. And I'd move passage. Mrs. Feather makes a motion to approve amended policy I twelve K eight proficiency based grading. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Collins. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Next item, discussion of start, school start and end times, common planning time, 2024-2025, Dr. Thornton. I'm going to defer to Mr. Adams on this, Madam Chair. Wow. That's a lot of talking for me. Um, uh, so as the committee well knows, um, for many years, the school department uh, provided, com or the, the school department provided common planning time for teachers in the form of what became known, I think, as early release Wednesday, right? So the entire student body was released not quite an hour, I think, but yeah, I think it was actually an hour early. And teachers did common planning, which is um, a requirement of the Rhode Island Department of Education, but also something that is a good thing in those people who are educators who know more than I do about it. The manner in which Cumberland did it, I think many, many uh, of the administrators certainly, and probably teachers and building administrators believe that that was a key ingredient of the growth, uh, student growth over the past, you know, 10 years. Um, in the year that we are in, actually beginning last year, the Rhode Island Department of Ed Education began to enforce for this school year that we are in, so we are in 23-24, um, a provision of their regulations that required that each school shall have a minimum of 330 instructional minutes every day. The way that this district implemented its CPT, early release Wednesday did not have 330 instructional minutes per day, it had less. And on all the other days, it had way more than 330 instructional minutes. There appeared to our reading of it collectively, and I think for almost every single district in the state, wiggle room that it did not really require um, every day to be 330 minutes as long as over the course of a week we averaged that. Well, Ride took a very different view. And as a consequence, this school department had to eliminate CPT for this school year as it had been conducted previously. There was no longer early release Wednesday because of Ride's pronouncement in that regard that now we were all going to have to have a minimum of 330 instructional minutes. Um, so in, I think, um, so the school committee uh, decided that we would fight Ride on it. We fought them, um, but ultimately decided that um, given how prolonged that battle could be because of the nature of administrative proceedings, you might win, you would lose most likely a ride, you'd be in the Superior Court, then you'd be in the Supreme Court, it could take years. And all the while, we would be potentially missing CPT. So as a consequence of that, we started having discussions with the Rhode Island Department of Education about how we could live within their rules, even though we believe their rules are not what the law actually requires. Sometimes you have to do what's expedient so that you can do what's best for kids. So we are in the process of putting together a schedule that will, um, instead of being early release Wednesday, so to speak, as it was, 
um, which was significantly different from the other four days, it's going to get squished a little bit. So instead of the school day being roughly 400 minutes, I know that's hard to get your head around, but that's six hours and 40 minutes, the school day may be six hours and 30 minutes most of the time, and it may be six hours and 12 minutes for other days. All of that is designed to continue to keep the amount of minutes roughly the same that students are in school, but allows us to get to that mythical, I would call it, but magical from Ride's perspective, 330 minutes every single day of instructional time, which is five and a half hours if you're doing the math. Um, and so ultimately we're trying to resolve the claim with the Rhode Island Department of Education. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but that's where we're headed. Um, and the whole goal, the big picture for you, is a return of CPT in the way that it has been so successful for the school department. So that's the gist of where we are. So at some point, will we have to vote on this? So I, I think we typically haven't, but um, typically has, have, hasn't been done that way. The, so the administration will um, make their proposal to the Rhode Island Department of Education, and that has been typically the way we have done it, and that's probably the way we're going to do it this year. Um, and so when would we know that this, like, that we can really do this? Next, by May 1st, we must give a schedule to RIDE, which incorporates this CPT conversation. RIDE typically uh, gets back to districts in the month of June to tell us if we're approved or not. But so far, our conversations have been such that we think this will be approved. Right. I think so we feel like it's, I feel like based, so it's different in this circumstance because you have a lawyer talking with a lawyer at the Rhode Island Department of Education. So I'm reasonably confident that whatever we propose, famous last words, will, will garner the approval that we need. And so it will be important. So this is first a heads up, but important that all of the parents in the town understand this, and especially those that need to account for childcare. This, I mean, we've always, we've always had it, except for this year. We weren't able to implement it this year, so we're going back to, but, but slightly, the, will the timing be slightly different on yeah. Wednesdays? So that's, just using the high school as an example, the general architecture would be kind of the same, okay? But just, I, I happen to know the, the, the end times for the high school off the top of my head generically. It's my understanding that currently, this year, right now, it's 155. Um, I think that's right, 155. Five days a week. A year ago, it was 155 four days a week and probably 1255 one of those days. That was the early release. Wednesday was an hour earlier. Under this schedule, it would be something closer to, instead of 155 being the end time four days a week, 145 would be the end time thereabouts. So school would end a little bit earlier than it is ending now, and that would be across the district. But at the high school, I'm giving that specific example because I know it's you know, uh, 155, or I believe it's 155. Um, uh, and on the shorter day, instead of it being 145 four days a week and 1245, it would be math is hard, 18 minutes, 127-ish, something like that. Thank you, Amy Vogel, for the help with the math. So it would be a little more constricted in terms of the difference. There still would be a shorter day for students. It just wouldn't be as short as it used to be. That's the general idea, but that's, the, that's good to let start that conversation so the public is aware. Also, if I could add, we did also hear back from RIDE and Superintendents Association um, if districts do have uh, surplus minutes like we did this year, if we have a snow day, we have the ability to not have to make up that day to a point. So we believe next year part of the application will be, like this year, we could have in place three days, if you will, where if it did have a flood 
or a snow day, um, we could, uh, you know, just keep moving the calendar. <laughs> so, so too soon. Too soon. <laughs> so um, we feel pretty confident that that will be built in. Yes, uh, we did talk with uh, folks at the state this week as well, and that is what we were told. Okay. All right. We do not have. Um, we will not be taking a vote on this. This is more just discussion, and then uh, Dr. Thornton will make a recommendation that he gives to Ride, and then we'll have official information to share with everyone. But it is a important heads up. Any other discussion, comments, questions from the school committee? Okay. All right. Thank you, and thank you, Dr. Thornton and Mr. Adams, for really pushing this with Ride. I know we were really disappointed last year when they made us take away our common planning time, which we know has been a real important factor to our achievement across the town. So we'll be glad to get that back. Thank you for all your effort. Okay, next item, discussion and or vote to approve resolutions. Mr. Collins. Thank you very much. Uh, we have 13 resolutions on the agenda. First thing I would ask is that SCPR-04-2024-50, the power purchase agreement with first point power, uh, we'd ask that that be tabled as it was during fiscal management subcommittee. There, uh, there's a paperwork uh, issue that we're gonna address at the next meeting. So uh, I would ask for a motion to table SCPR-04-2024-50. So you're making a motion to table that? So Mr. Collins makes a motion to table SCPR-04-2024-50. Do we have a second? Second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. We have 12 remaining resolutions. SCPR-04-2024-43 through 55 uh, minus number 50. 12 total resolutions, all of which pass fiscal management subcommittee three to zero and I'd move passage to the full committee. Mr. Collins makes a motion to approve 12 resolutions, SCPR 04-2024-43 through 55 minus number 40. Do we have a second? 50. Oh, minus 50, sorry. <laughs> it says it right here, sorry. Minus 50, do we have a second? <laughs> second by Mrs. Vogel. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, that passes five to zero. Next item, discussion and or vote to approve payment of bills. Mr. Collins. Right, uh, we have payment of the bills at the amount of $2,116,000 $287.34. Payment of the bills passed fiscal management subcommittee three to zero and I'd move passage to the full committee. Mr. Collins makes a motion to approve payment of bills. Do we have a second? Second by Mrs. Vogel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes five to zero. Next item on the agenda, school committee comments, school liaison reports. Any comments from the school committee? Ms. Smith? I know that Mrs. Coughlin has left, but um, I think this is fabulous for her, and I'm so happy. And, you know, we got to see that during the budget season when Mrs. Storm came in and did a presentation to us on the McCourt data, and you saw the growth and the strength that she presented, and Mrs. Coughlin's been um, mentoring her this entire year, this school year, and you can just see the leaps and bounds of the professional levels and super, super thankful to Mrs. Coughlin and I'm glad that she received that award and I'm really hoping that she pulls out a national win as well. Thank you. Um, I don't have a school related comment but I would just like to wish my husband who might be watching at home a happy birthday. Aww. Next item is a vote to go into executive session. I don't believe we have that. All set. Okay, and then I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mrs. Feather. Second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, public, we didn't No, we didn't. All of, <laughs> it passes five to zero. We are adjourned at 7.40 p.m. Thank you.